Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis, video number five. And in this video, we'll learn how to create frequency distributions and the associated visualizations for categorical data. All right, you can download the file for Chapter 2 at our People website or in the link below the video. Now, when you download your file, be sure to save it in the folder with your name that you created in video number one. Now, Chapter 2 and Chapter 3 are all about descriptive statistics. And in this chapter, we'll do tabular and graphical summaries of data. And next chapter, we'll do numerical summaries of data. As we studied in video number one, descriptive statistics just means data that is summarized or presented. We can have tabular summaries. That's a table of information. I usually just call these reports. Graphical summaries, that's often taking the tabular with all the detail and creating a chart, graph, or visualization to get a quick visual impression. And in fact, these days, the word graphical is not used very often. We usually say we're going to visualize the data. Now, why tabular and graphical? Because it's hard to see patterns and trends when we're looking at the raw data. Our goal is to create useful information from that raw data so we can see patterns and trends. This, of course, helps in decision making. Now, when we're dealing with data in this chapter, we'll be dealing with one variable and two variables. For one variable, well, of course, we have categorical and quantitative. For the categorical, when we do tabular, we'll build a frequency distribution. But the graphical part is always going to be a column or a bar chart, not a pie chart, not a histogram. When we get to one variable quantitative, for tabular, we'll build frequency distributions. But the graphical display will depend on whether we have discrete, then we use a column or bar chart, or continuous data, then we use a histogram. And as we'll learn later, we never use the Microsoft built-in histogram chart. When we jump over to two variables, for categorical or quantitative, when we build a tabular summary, we use a cross-tabulation. And we have two options for visualizing, either clustered column or bar, or stack column or bar. When we have two variable xy quantitative data, then we can use graphically the xy scatter chart. Now, the video topics for chapter 2 will have videos 5 to 9. Now, just like last video, we're going to have a lot of new terms, and they're in the textbook. But guess what? I have a sheet here in this Excel workbook called Terms. And if you Control P, I've already done Page Setup. And you can print these out and read them if you'd like. Now, let's go over to the sheet Column and Bar Charts. When you are comparing differences across categories, like frequency for these products, frequency for product number, count or frequency for units, or frequency for a group continuous variable category, the number one visualization or chart to use is column or bar, not a pie chart. Now, research shows that humans can gauge the difference between rectangles, either vertical ones or horizontal ones, more easily than they can with wedges in a pie chart. Now, the research has been done over the last five to 10 years. And it's funny, our textbook has a section on how to do pie charts. And then because this textbook has been around for 30 years, they added a section at the end of the chapter that says, well, you probably shouldn't use pie charts. So I'm going to click on this and delete. We're not going to use pie charts. We'll use column or bar charts. Now, another important note about the textbook. The textbook calls column and bar charts all bar charts. Now, the history of statistics, they do call column charts bar. But since we're using the tool Excel, and Excel calls vertical columns, column charts, and horizontal bars, bar charts, those are the terms we're going to use. Now, there's four situations where we use column or bar charts. And notice 1, 2, 3 have gaps between the columns or the bars. And then the last one does not have a gap between the columns or bars. When you have a continuous quantitative variable, you indicate that it's a continuous variable 
by having no gaps between the columns or the bars. Check this out, 0 to 50. Well, if we group that with a pivot table, we know the upper limit is not included, so the 50 is on the lower limit. But there are no numbers that can fit between these two categories. So you visually indicate that with no gaps in the charts. When you have categorical variables, either text or words, or numbers that represent those categories, those are distinct items, so you have to have gaps between the columns. For discrete number variables, and in this case, the company only sells products in lots of 1, 6, and 12. So to indicate that we can't get numbers between 1 and 6 and 6 and 12, we leave a gap between the columns. Now for the four different types of charts, the column height conveys the number. And for the bars, the length of the bar conveys the numbers. But when it comes to the horizontal or vertical axis labels, there's a big difference between categorical data and quantitative data. For categorical data, the order of the categories conveys no information. But for the quantitative data, both discrete and continuous, the order of the categories is sorted smallest to biggest. And this helps show the distribution or variation or shape of the data. And when we get into the later chapters and we're using probability distributions, that will be important. Now, how do you choose between using a column or a bar chart? Well, they're basically interchangeable, except for two things. Sometimes when you use a bar chart, you can emphasize the differences across the categories more forcefully than you can with a column chart. And that's because of the horizontal orientation. The other thing is that if you have really long labels for your categories, they will fit on a single line and appear neater than if you use a column chart. Now, we'll see variations for both the bar and the column chart. This is an example of a side-by-side -side chart or a clustered column where we're comparing projected against actual. Also, when we do cross tabulations, we'll use clustered column and stack column. Those are other variations where we use column charts. Now, this is a yellow sheet, so you can Control P. And there's your column and bar chart cheat sheet. I'm going to click Escape. All right, let's go learn some Excel charting tricks for categorical data. We'll go to the sheet Categorical Data. On this sheet, we have a sample of 200 sales from boomerangs.com. We have many fields, some with categorical data, some with quantitative data. And each record represents one sale or one transaction. Now, our first frequency distribution will be based on the categorical variable payment method. So we'll click in a single cell. And instead of going up to Insert and Pivot Table, we'll use our keyboard, Alt-N-V-T. I want to put this on the existing sheet, N4, click OK. And the beauty of the pivot table is when we take a field payment method and drag it down to rows, instantly I get a unique list. When I drag that text field down to values, it defaults to count. I want to change the label at the top, frequency, and enter. And with just a few clicks, we have our frequency distribution. We have our tabular summary that shows a unique list of non-overlapping categories and the counts or the frequency for each category. Now let's calculate percent frequency. We drag payment method down to values. At the top, I'll type a new label, Enter, right click. And for this calculation, we want to make sure that the existing aggregate calculation is count, because based on that count, and the total at the bottom, which is all the transactions, 200. Now we go to Show Values As, and I want to say, take all those counts and do percent of column total. And bam, just like that, it took each individual frequency, divided by the total count, and added number formatting. Now, because we have mutually exclusive categories, that means whatever we're counting can only fit into one category, and we have a collectively exhaustive set of categories. That means we have enough categories. When we add all of the percentages up, we'll always get 100%. Looking at the percent frequency column, we can see that 32% of the transactions were paid 
using PayPal. And over 60% of the transactions were paid for using PayPal or Visa. Now, the other calculation that we make in the textbook is called relative frequency. So I want to click somewhere in the pivot table, drag payment method down to values. At the top, I'm going to type relative frequency and Enter. And here's the crazy thing. We're going to make the exact same calculation. Right click, show values as, percent of column total. But now we need to remove the number formatting. And the way we remove the number formatting is to use the field number formatting dialog box. Now, when you right click in this field, that's the option we want. We do not want to use format cells. This option right here only appears in this drop down menu when you're inside a pivot table. If you're outside a pivot table and right click, you don't see number because there is no field inside a pivot table. Format cells is there, but not number. Right click, number format. Now, this looks like the format cells dialog box. And Microsoft made a mistake when they named it Format Cells at the top. It really should say Number Formatting for Field. But you can tell this is the right dialog box because it's missing all of the tabs in the Format Cells except for the Number tab. We select Number, and our goal is to wipe away all the number formatting and see just the decimals. Now, if I click General, click OK, that's not quite what I want, because I want to show three decimals for all of them. So right click, Number Formatting, Number. And I'm going to say three decimals, no separator. Click OK. Now relative frequency is calculated exactly the same. Each individual frequency divided by the total. But there's no percentage number formatting. And relative frequency is very common when it comes to probability. Innately, these are exactly the same calculation. It's just this one has a number formatting applied. In either case, 32% or 0.32, this says for every 100 transactions, 32 were made with PayPal. And later, we can use this to estimate the unknown future. When we call this a probability, we'll say, well, we believe if we have similar situation in the future, 32% of the transactions will be paid for with PayPal. Now, when we're dealing with categorical data, that's it. Those are the calculations that we make in a frequency distribution. We count and then calculate percent of total or parts compared to the whole or the total at the bottom of the column. Next video, when we do quantitative frequency distributions, there'll be two other calculations. Now, how do we visualize this? Well, we're going to use a column or bar chart. But here's the thing about a pivot table. If I click in the cell and insert a column chart, it'll take one, two, three, all three of the calculations and put them into the chart. And that's not what we want. So when you build a frequency distribution with multiple calculations, you just leave it there as a tabular summary. Then you come over, click in a single cell, Alt-N-V-T on the existing sheet. Now, I'm going to put this pivot table below. And remember, pivot tables can expand and contract. So I'm going to put it at least four rows below. Click OK. Payment method down to rows, also down to values. Frequency. Now I want you to notice something. Every time we create a new pivot table or refresh the pivot table, the column widths change. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to come up here, right click. Pivot Table Options, and in the Layout and Format tab, I'm going to uncheck Auto Fit Column Widths on Update. Click OK. I'm also going to do it to this pivot table. What? You mean I have to do it to every single pivot table? Yep. Uncheck Auto Fit Column Widths on Update. Click OK. Now I want to show you an important pivot table trick. I want to set the default setting so that up in Design, Layout, Report Layout, I've already set my default to tabular. And the beauty of this option here is that I always see the field names instead of row labels. If I had not changed it to tabular, this would say row labels. So I want to go universally change all future pivot tables to show tabular form and to have that checkbox unchecked. So we go up to File, down to Options. In Excel Options dialog box, we go to Data, 
Make changes to default layout of pivot tables. Click Edit. Now, here's a cool thing. Import layout, it'll import all of the settings that I set. So you can use that on your computer. Get your one pivot table where you want all the settings and then just use that. But we have some options here. I've already set report layout show in tabular. Now I want to go over to pivot table options. And there it is. I have all of these options. And there's a bunch of different things here. All I want to change is auto fit. Now, it does mean that I'm going to have to manually adjust column widths. But when I change the column widths on a pivot table and insert a new one, it won't wreck the column widths for the existing pivot table reports. All right, I'm going to click OK, click OK, click OK. And now all future pivot tables that we create in this class will have those settings. All right, let's visualize this frequency distribution. We click in a single cell, go up to the Insert tab, Charts Group. And we can look at the column dropdown, but we're almost always going to be using either clustered column or sometimes we'll switch it to stack column. Now, clustered column, let's click, and there's our chart. Now, we only have one series of numbers, so we have one series of blue columns. Later, when we do a cross-tab report, you'll see that you have multiple columns under a single category called clustered columns. To move a chart, you don't want to point to the inside, because then when you click and drag, it moves the elements. When you want to move the whole chart, you want to point to the outside edge. There's our Move cursor. Click and drag. And if you hold the Alt key, it snaps to grid. You can also resize, click and drag. If you hold the Alt key, it snaps to grid. Now, the number one rule for visualizing data with Excel charts is no chart junk. And that phrase comes from the famous visualizing expert, Edward Tufte. And all it means is that you remove all chart elements that do not help to deliver the message. For example, this is called a legend, and it's helpful when you have multiple series. Well, we only have one series, so we don't need it. If you leave it in, it will only clutter the visualization. It definitely is chart junk. Now, you can use the Delete key or up in the right-hand corner, the green plus, you can click. And there's various chart elements that you can uncheck or check. Now, I usually just use the Delete key. So I'm going to use Delete. These are called field buttons. And if we come up to the pivot table and change something up here like Filter to not show American Express, this is a pivot table. The chart is connected. So when I click OK, it automatically reflects that. That makes these unnecessary. Now, we definitely want all categories in our pivot table. So I'm going to use Control-Z to undo that. But the point is, this is chart junk, an unnecessary element. So we right click and hide all field buttons on chart. That's what we want. But sometimes it doesn't show up when you right click. So the other way to do it is select the chart, go up to Pivot Chart Analyze, and there's the Field button. Click the drop down and hide all. I usually just right click, hide all field buttons. Now, the word total as a chart title alone is definitely chart junk. Now, we want to link this chart title to a chart title that I put into cell O2. And the way you link a label to something in a cell is you want to make sure that you do not see the dotted outline, but by selecting the outside edge, you see the solid line. Then you can type an equal sign that shoots you up to the formula bar. Then you click on cell O2 and Enter. If I come up and change the text in this cell, I'm going to get rid of that www and Enter. Now the chart title updates. Now we definitely want labels both on the vertical and horizontal axis to indicate what in the world these numbers are. We click on the chart. In the upper right corner, we use our chart element green plus, And I'm going to check Access Titles. Now, same thing here. Make sure you have the solid line. Type an equal sign. That shoots you up to the formula bar. And this is frequency. So I click on Frequency and Enter. Down to the horizontal axis, equal sign. This is Payment Method and Enter. And now we have a categorical data visualization using a column chart. Now, as you look at your finished visual, you want to ask the question of every single element, does it help to deliver the message? Well, all the elements in this do seem to be helping 
deliver the message. The frequency for PayPal and Visa is the most. These ones have far fewer. We could see the numbers over on the side, and the horizontal grid lines help us to line everything up. So all of these three payment methods are less than 30. Both of these are greater than 60. Now, this is not the only way to visualize when you're making a column chart. Now, whereas this chart is nice because it has the horizontal grid lines to help us compare, maybe we don't want those lines. Maybe we don't want these estimations over here, but we would like the exact frequency count at the top of the column. So I'm going to copy this chart, Control-C. And whatever you do, don't Control-V with the chart selected. Click below or somewhere in the worksheet, Control-V. Scrolling down. Now I want to show the exact frequencies at the top. So I come over to the green plus chart elements. And we'll say, check data labels. And bam, just like that, we have at the top of each column the exact frequency. Now as soon as you do this, that means it looks like we have chart junk. We want one or the other, usually not both. So I'm simply going to select it and use the Delete key. You could also use the arrow and say, uncheck primary vertical. But again, I like the Delete key. Same with the grid lines here. Uncheck there or simply Delete. And there we have a slightly different emphasis. We don't have the grid lines for easy comparison, but we have the exact data and the immediacy of the visual. These are clearly the biggest. These are the smallest. Now I'm going to copy this chart, Control-C, because that's a column. Control-V, we can change this to a bar. With the chart selected, you can go up to the Design tab, click Change Chart Type, or simply right click and select Change Chart Type. On the left, I want to select Bar. And we have the same two basic options. Cluster, that's when you have multiple series of numbers, or Stack. That also is for multiple series. We'll see both of these when we use Cross Tab. If you have one data series, both charts will give you the same result. For now, I'm just clicking Cluster. Click OK. It definitely emphasizes the differences more forcefully than the column chart. And sometimes these longer labels look neater on a bar chart. Now I do want to change something in the bar element. So I'm going to click to select it. And for any selected element inside a chart, we can use the keyboard to open up the Format Task pane. Now luckily, the keyboard to format charts is the same as the keyboard to format cells. So I select a cell, Control-1. That opens up Format Cells. But that's not what we want. We can select any element in the chart. I want to select the bar and then use the keyboard Control-1. And sure enough, Format Data Series Task Pane shows up. Now sometimes this task pane is hard to use. So you have to click through the icons to find just what you want. But usually if you select the element Control-1, it'll pop up with what you need. And what we need is to change the gap width. But remember, this is categorical data. So you cannot have the columns touching. That's only for continuous data. But I definitely want to make them a little bit wider like the column charts above. So let's just change this to 100 and then Tab. We can also select the data labels. And notice I selected them, and the task pane didn't come up where I wanted. So I'm going to use Control-1. And down here, Label Position, I'm going to say Inside End. Now immediately when we do this, if we squint our eyes, you can see the value difference is not big enough. If you print it out, it will not look good. Even looking at it, it's hard to read. Now you would think that font color is in the task pane, but it's not. I usually just go up to Home and then use the regular font. I'm going to say White. You can also right click and point to Font. And that is looking good. Those are three acceptable options for visualizing this frequency distribution for categorical data. Now I want to do relative frequency, and we need a separate pivot table with a separate calculation to do that. So I'm going to select the whole pivot table, Control-C, and then off to the side, Control-V. And then right click, Show Values As, Percent of Column Total. Change the label at the top. And you know, I use F2 to put it in edit mode. If you double click this, it opens up the value field settings. 
you can change the name up here, summarize values by, show values as, and even get to number formatting. This is like the one-stop shopping for the values area in a pivot table. I'm going to change this to percent frequency, click OK. Now to create a chart, I go up to Insert, Chart, drop down, and I'm going to select Bar. Move it over here, right click, Hide All, select Delete. And as an alternative to linking the chart title to the cell, you can select and with a solid line simply start typing. Now watch what happens when I start typing the label. It actually shoots me up to the formula bar. You'd think that you'd see it here, but it's up in the formula bar for payment method from sample data. And then when I hit Enter, now I've actually put the name of the calculation, the variable that we're counting, and the fact that this is sample data all into the title. So I don't need the axis labels. Now I'm going to delete, click the plus, data labels, select the labels, Control-1. This is annoying sometimes. Sometimes you have to like click Escape to get rid of it. Control-1, inside edge, right click, font change it to white. And let's select the columns, and we'll change it to 100. To change the bar color, we'll click on the Paint Bucket icon, Solid. I'm going to change it to a dark blue, and even add a border, something like black. And now we have visualized this categorical data from a frequency distribution in four different ways, each way with a slight different emphasis. We have the horizontal lines, which make it easier to compare. We have the exact data and no horizontal lines. Here, we decided to go with a bar chart. And here, we combine some of the label information into the chart title. Now, when we plot categorical data like this, the order of the labels conveys no information. These are just categories. And then we look at the height of the column. Now, there is one situation where you have categorical data where you sort the columns. And that's called a Pareto chart. So let's go see how to build that. Now, a Pareto chart is used in quality control to show the highest to lowest frequency of problems from left to right. Often, a cumulative line is added also. Now, we have a column of data from Boomerang customers saying why they were dissatisfied. I've already created a frequency distribution. And our goal is to sort these categories by the frequency. To do this, we click the Filter dropdown. And we don't use A to Z or Z to A, because that would sort the text in this column. We click More Sort Options. Then we select Descending. And from the dropdown, we can say, hey, sort these labels by the frequencies in the Values area. So I select Frequency, click OK. Now these values are sorted biggest to smallest. Now, for categorical data, we count and do a percent of total. But once we sort these and there's an order to the numbers, then we can add a cumulative frequency. Now, cumulative just means here is 21, here is 21 plus 9, which is 30, and so on. So it's like a running total. But then we convert it to a percentage. So click inside the pivot table, drag the field down to values, right click. And let's first look at Show Values As, Running Total In. It wants to know what field. We only have one field here. Click OK. So it's adding them up to get the overall total in the last row. Not in the total row, but the last row. Now right click, because what we want is percent of running total in. Click OK. And up here percent cumulative. You can put running percent of running total if you like that better. And Enter. Now, we have two numbers in our pivot table. And as we discussed earlier, if we build a chart, it'll use both calculations. But that's what we want here. So with the single cell selected, we go to Insert Charts. And we're going to use the Combo option. The second option, when I click, the frequency is plotted on the primary axis percent frequency on the secondary axis. Now, we don't need these field buttons, so right click, Hide All Field Buttons. Let's select the legend and Control-1. And we want to show it at the top. 
Notice these labels tell us exactly what the column and the line represent. Let's go to the green plus, and I want to add data labels. Now we have a lot of chart junk here. And what I really want to do is click and delete, but that takes it away from the secondary axis. Control Z. So we have to get tricky here. I have to apply a number formatting to show nothing. So I select the axis, Control 1, down to number. And in this class, we're not going to learn about custom number formatting, which is a type of coding. But I have to show you this trick if you type one, two, three semicolons, and click Add. That's the code that says no matter what is actually in the cell, show nothing. Let's do the same thing over here. Semicolon three times, click Add. If you don't believe that, you can come over to the cells Control-1, down to Custom, and try it. It's really quite devious. Click OK. If you click in the cell, the actual thing is still there. If you hit F2, it's still there. But as we talked about earlier in this class, number formatting is a facade which can disguise what's actually in the cell. Now I'm going to click Escape and Control Z because I definitely don't want that there. But for our chart, it accomplishes the goal. Now we want to click to select the percentages. Control 1. Let's show these above. And then this rogue 45%, I'm going to click once to select just that. And carefully with my move cursor, I'll move this to the side. Now looking at these percentages, I think we can make the chart less cluttered if we decrease the decimals. Now this pivot table is connected to the chart, so we can change the number formatting here. Percent cumulative values area, right click, number formatting. And let's try zero decimals, click OK. Now notice for these numbers in the chart, we changed the number formatting here because we wanted the number formatting in the tabular and the graphical display to be the same. But when we did the axis numbers, we wanted to keep the numbers here but use the charting number area to display nothing. And so there we can see 65% of the reasons are either unattractive design or bad finish. We also see some good news. There was only one complaint about no instructions. Because of course, when you buy a boomerang, the most important part of what you buy are good instructions. Now let's add a title. We'll use the green plus. Check. We see the solid line. I'm going to type an equal sign. Shoots me up to the formula bar. Click on cell C4 and Enter. Let's reduce the font size. Home. I'll try 12. And that's looking good. There's our Pareto chart with categorical data, frequency columns, and a percent cumulative for the sorted frequency amounts. All right, that's a good place to stop this video because that percent cumulative calculation is usually done for quantitative variables. And that'll be our next video. But in this video, we talked about the Pareto chart. We also talked about how to create frequency distributions and bar and column visualizations for categorical data. And on the column and bar sheet, we talked all about bar and column charts. And even on the term sheet, remember, Control P and print that out. And there's all the notes. All right, we'll see you next video.